It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the films of December 3rd, 2004. So we're finally heading into the last month of the year, and uh, we've got three movies here. One that I have definitely got a lot of favorable things to say about, and the other two are movies that I mostly have not really seen, so we can get through this pretty quickly. So uh, let's go and get into that big movie that I'm talking about here, the biggest new release of the weekend, Mike Nichols' star-studded romantic drama, Closer. I find it kind of amusing that Natalie Portman says that Julia Roberts is tall when you literally had a scene before that where Jude Law and Julia Roberts are kissing and he's literally taller than her to the point where he's holding the back of her head and her he his hand is literally bigger than her head at that point. I mean, I don't know. I found that kind of amusing. But um, And also, we're 67% through the Jude Law movies of 2004 with five weeks to go in 2004. So uh, we're halfway there, folks. We're halfway there. In this movie, he plays a smart but ineffectual journalist named Dan, who can't decide between his girlfriend, a loving but clinging waitress, Alice, played by uh, Julia, played by Natalie Portman, excuse me, or his lover, cold but intellectual photographer Anna, played by Julia Roberts, herself indecisive between Dan and honest but thuggish Doctor Larry, played by Clive Owen, and the film puts the four leading characters into a box and strips them apart. So basically, it's a instead of a love triangle, it's a love rect it's a love square at this point because you know. Clive Owen is Jude Law is cheating on Natalie Portman with Julia Roberts. Clive Owen is cheating on uh, Julia Roberts with Natalie Portman. Basically that. Um, it's based off of a play of the same name. Who actually The playwright, uh, Patrick Marber, actually wrote the script for this. And it's been seen as kind of a modern and tragic version of Wolfgang Amadeus's Cousy Van Toot opera from, the, from 1790 with references to the opera in both the plot and the soundtrack. And... Um, and the film itself is really, really good. It reminds me a lot of Eyes Wide Shut, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Like, it's like Eyes Wide Shut times two, except uh, this time around it's more... I mean, there's more intrigue and more deception because it's just not it's not just two people that are being hurt by what's going on in their situation, but it's four different people going through all four, four of these different situations. And it makes for a really engaging... Like I said, Love Square, and you've got four really talented actors to make this work. You know, Julia Roberts, Jude Law, Natalie Portman, Clive Owen. Both of them, both Portman and Owen, actually got Academy Award nominations for this, their first ever. And it's funny, when you watch that trailer, you see, you know, Oscar no winner Julia Roberts, Oscar nominee Jude Law, and then you see just Natalie Portman and Clive Owen. This changed their whole thing altogether but, um, when, with the Academy Awards, but... The film is really, really good. It's a really good love, tr love square, it's love conflict situation between these characters. And I gotta say, man, Natalie Portman is just, man, it doesn't matter what kind of hair you give her. You can give her a red hair, you can give her a, bl a blonde wig, you can give her just a regular black hair. That girl's beautiful in this movie, man. Like, she's incredible. She's beautiful to look at. And she gives one of the strongest performances in the movie. And it's no wonder why she is... She's one of the things you'll always remember from the movie because she really is given it her all in this movie. This is the movie where I think really elevated her to the next level of her superstardom. You know, Garden State came out the same year, and I really like Garden State, but this is probably one of my favorite performances from Portman in this movie. But Julie Roberts, Clive Owen, Jude Law, they're all great in the film as well. Clive Owen I also thought was really good too. Julie Roberts and Jude Law maybe are kind of the weaker aspects in terms of the cast in general, but they're not bad by any means necessary. They're still very good actors in this. And um, most notably, this was a nice return to form from Mike Nichols, who was kind kind of a little bit of a lull after what is in the, around this time around this time before this, because he made stuff like the, some movies that weren't spectacular, like regarding Henry, Primary Colors, What Planet Are You From? He would occasionally have that one spark here and there with something like Working Girl, Postcards from the Edge, Wolf, The Birdcage, and um, he did his career with two big, two great movies, this one and then Charlie Wilson's War a couple years later, also with Julie Robinson and. And, um, and also he had Angels in America the year before. So this was kind of the last cut gasp before he, before he essentially retired from film and then later passed away. Because so I think he died in 2014. 2014 so, uh, yeah. It's a really good movie. A really intense thriller. A really good love tra romantic drama. It's a really good movie with a lot of good performances all around. Just a really good th thriller of a film. It's a really engaging film. Definitely a movie that I really like a lot. I do recommend it easily. Uh, closer. Definitely check it out. Uh, so with that said, let's move on to our next movie, and that is House of Flying Daggers. In a great year for, two, for Zhang Zhimou, who had two really great martial arts movies in 2004, Heroes, 
and a, a hero, excuse me, not heroes, not the TV show, the movie, the Jet Li movie Hero, which we talked about already, and House of Flying Daggers, where in this movie, during the reign of the Tang Dynasty in China, a secret organization called the House of Flying Daggers rises and opposes the government. A police officer called Leo sends Officer Jin to investigate a young dancer named Mei, claiming that she has ties to the Flying Daggers. Leo arrests Mei, Mei, Mei only to have Jin break her in her free in her plot to gain her trust and lead the police to the new leader of the secret organization. But things are more complicated than they seem. But, this, but the martial arts sequences are going to look spectacular. This is made by the same people that uh, were the producers behind Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. So you know exactly what you're going to get when you go into this movie. And it really does work very well. But it's not really a martial arts movie. It actually is an engaging story that is more story-driven than you would think. I think Hero works well because of the visual effects the visual effects and the action sequences the visuals and the action sequences are great in this movie but it's really the love story between the two main characters that i think works very well here i think they're both very well are uh, very handled are handled very well here you've got uh andy lao and also zhang ziu zhang zihi who was in who would later star in memoirs of a geisha the following year and then she was also in rush hour 2 which was the movie that kind of launched her with the into the into the stratosphere with the american public and you know, she's a really good actress and doesn't really get a whole lot of memorable, a lot of great movies anymore. Like, she does a couple of movies here and there, like she was in The Grandmaster. But other than that, she really, she doesn't really do a whole lot of movies here in the U.S. anymore. Mostly doing movies back in, uh, back in, is back in China. But, um, the movie is very impressive to look at. It's a visual sp splendor to look at. It has a lot of the great things that made movies like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and Hero the great movies that they are. And it has an engaging storyline that works because you get, do get attached to the three main characters in here. They have a lot of good storylines to tell. There's a lot of good aspects to the film. It's a really impressively put together film. It really works on a number of different levels. It's a movie I do recommend checking out. Uh, one that you probably don't, not, have not heard of too much, but definitely worth a watch. House of Flying Daggers. So, uh... Let's move on to our last movie, and that is I Am David. Hello, I'm David. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, ASD of movie, uh, check that clip out. But um, this is I Am David, and boy, did that trailer look like one of those... That didn't even look like a real movie, quite honestly. It looked like a fake movie trailer, like you see in, like, um, like you would see at the beginning of Tropic Thunder. Like, you almost expect to see Robert Downey Jr. and... and uh, Toby Maguire in that in that situation doing one of, doing the same parody they did for Satan's that for like the Satan for like the church movie they did for Tropic Thunder and that I mean it did look not, did not look like a real movie is what I'm trying to say here but um it's a real movie and believe it or not the director on there as the light started dimming on me while I'm trying to get to the synopsis the director on this movie is someone you might be familiar with and that is Paul Fahey. That, of course, is the man that gave us Bridesmaids, uh, The Heat, uh, Spy, Ghostbusters, Simple, uh, Simple, uh, Simple, why can't I remember the name? A Simple Favor, good lord, I, I love this movie, A Simple Favor, and I can't even remember the title, but uh, he also did Last Christmas, uh, a bunch of other movies, that a bunch of more mainstream movies, but you wouldn't believe that this was his first movie as a director. Uh, feature director, I should say. But in this movie, you have a 12-year-old named David who escapes from a communist concentration camp with little more than a compass, a sealed letter, and a loaf of bread, and instructions to carry the letter to Copenhagen, Denmark. David is thrust into the free world for the first time as he travels across Europe, his spiritual voyages of voyage of discovery, where David slowly loses his instinctive mistrust of humanity and begins to smile, share trust, and ultimately love, addressing the cruelties, politics, and suffering of warfare while celebrating the unbreakable spirit of a child. Literally sounds like a movie that's an Oscar bait film in general, but um, I can't really say anything about this movie too much because honestly, I've never seen this movie before, and I had no idea that it was directed by Paul Feige. And the fact that this was the movie that basically began his film career as a whole, but um, yeah, other than that though, there's really not much more I can say about this film. Has an what am I saying? There's nothing really more I can say about this movie because I haven't. See, I'll get my words mixed up here. I was about to say, you know, nothing more that I could say that's already been said already, but I haven't seen this movie, so I don't know what the general consensus is from the general public about this film in general is, but, um, how many times can I say general, but, um, all I know is that Rotten Tomatoes did not give this the best reviews overall. In fact, it got really panned by critics when it came out, and it didn't really make much of a dent in the box office, and was pretty much largely forgotten in, in general, and, um, I honestly, watching that trailer, I could kind of see why, because this kid who played the title character never did another film after this, so, yeah. 
that should pretty much tell you everything you need to know about this film. But um, who knows? Maybe it actually is much better than I could, people give it credit for. But I sincerely doubt it. I've never heard anybody really ever talk about it. So I'm just going to say that it probably isn't that great of a movie to begin with. So um, yeah, not much more to say about that one. That is I Am David. And so on that note, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. We'll head into the second weekend of December next time around with a weekend that is very similar to what we saw 11 years ago in 93 because we have two sequels coming out on the same day. We have Ocean's 12, and we also have Blade Trinity, the Thorn and Storm of the Blade series, and we have Wes Anderson's very polarizing uh, film at the time, which was The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. So we'll take a look at those three movies all on the next episode. Uh, but until then... Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the plays on the next page, check out the previous episode, and also don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this on this channel. So, with that said, I am off, I will see you guys next time, and until then, as always, take care.